Hello. It's great to be here at Airflow Summit virtually with everybody around the world. This is awesome. Uh, I'm Evan. I am an engineer for the company Airbyte, and I'm in the US. Uh, I'm Marcos. I'm a user success engineer. Um, I help users from our community deploying Airbyte or troubleshooting problems they can face with the product. And also, I was responsible to create the Airbyte operator for the Airflow project, too. Awesome. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about Airbyte later, but we are a very popular open source project to help you move your data around and build your data warehouse. Uh, you can see some stats there below. And uh, of course, we are open source. So uh, this talk focuses around a demo we've prepared. Here's the link. If you go to github.com, airbytehq slash airflow dash summit dash airbyte dash 2022. Uh, this talk is meant to inspire you, to show you some examples of how we can use all of the open source tools uh, that can be automated, checked into Git, and automatically tested and deployed to run your data stack like a more traditional software engineering project and get the reliability as test coverage and everything else out of it. Um, so we, of course, we have an example uh, that we'll be walking through um, and really just meant to inspire you, to show you some of the cool stuff you can do. So what is Airbyte? Airbyte is an ELT tool. Uh, hopefully, it's a term familiar to the attendees of this conference. But a quick overview. In the dark olden days of 10 years ago, when you were making your data warehouse, you did ETL, extract transform load, uh, because filling in that data warehouse was a slow and expensive process. So you want to, only wanted to store the data that was useful and meaningful to you, which meant you had to kind of do some pre-computing modification of that data on the way in. Now, in the modern days, with our gigantic, infinitely scalable uh, cloud data warehouses, Snowflake, Redshift, uh, BigQuery, et cetera, uh, we do ELT, which means that you take the data, you put it in the data warehouse in its raw or close to raw form, and then you transform the pieces you want in the way you want. Uh, this is better for a couple of reasons. One, you always have your data around should you need to modify it or try to do something again. And you can go back and adjust with the data you have stored, uh, which is a lot more useful. So Airbyte fits into a stack kind of like this one, where you have Airflow on top as an orchestrator, keeping everything together. Uh, and what we focus on at Airbyte is grabbing the data putting it in your data warehouse, the extract and load steps of the process. So we focus on extracting from databases, API sources, files, you name it. We have over 100 different connectors and more coming. Uh, we can grab the data wherever it is and put it into your data warehouse. Then we use a tool like DBT to modify, transform, get the data in the way you want it so your customers uh, can use it, making various views on that data, various data warehouses, et cetera. And then finally, you'll visualize it with a tool like Superset or Looker. You'll activate that data, maybe doing some reverse ETL, maybe doing some data science on it, um, and really anything you can think of. And so Airbyte really focuses on the left part of this graph, uh, getting the data into your data warehouse. And that's what we do. So I am required, of course, to say the phrase, the modern data stack in a presentation, every presentation at this conference. Um, but really what's most interesting about this is the workflow you can get at when you have modern tools. Uh, so really what we're gonna talk about is the engineering workflow you can get uh, using these modern tools. Um, because data teams are engineering teams. We have a product we are building, we use software to do it, and we have customers using that product. We're an engineering team. Our users are probably internal, but still we need to be fast, reliable, agile, make sure it doesn't break, make sure it has a good uptime. And three of the most important tools in our tool belt to do that are version control, good tests, and continuous deployment. Um, and expanding on that, what it means is using version control, uh, most likely Git. You can track your changes. Um, you can roll back to an old version if something goes wrong. And there's some sort of process around making those changes active. Uh, a pull request or a code review, something of that nature. Um, and when you have tests, you can be confident that when you make that merge, when that pull request is merged, you have confidence that nothing is broken. And if you have confidence nothing is broken, you can get closer to continuous deployment, which means 
every change is automatically deployed, or at least to a staging environment before a production environment. Um, and because everything is tracked, giving it to different environments is not so tedious. Um, maybe it's a different branch for each environment or something like that. And so all of the new tools that have come out in the last couple of years really are focused on this workflow. How can we get everything checked into Git? How can we easily deploy it? And how can we write tests against it? And so that brings us right to the Octavia CLI. Uh, by the way, this is Octavia. Octavia is the Airbyte mascot, the octopus. Um, and as you'd expect, it's a CLI command. And this is how we can finally create sources, destinations, and connections in Airbyte from the command line, both reading and writing them. So we can finally check these things into Git. We released this uh, about a month ago. It's brand new, so I'm happy to share it with you. And we use the YAML format to store um, sources, destinations, and connections. And what's really cool about this is that you can also use environment variables. So this is a really important piece so that you can, one, keep your secrets out of Git. Maybe it's a database password, maybe it's an API key, or whatever might be secret to your sources and destinations. And you can change them for each environment, which is really awesome. So maybe you have a staging API key and a production API key for your source, or maybe you have a staging database and a production database, and you can send small amounts of data to one and big amounts of data to the other. All you have to change is the environment variable to make these tests uh, work and pass. So Octavia enables all of this, and again, was released uh, just about a month ago. Now, there's a couple of things coming soon for Octavia um, that aren't there yet that we do make use of in our demo today. And um, the big ones are deterministic IDs for things. Um, and you'll see we have a change resources ID Python file that's helping us through this. Um, doesn't stop the demo, doesn't stop this from working, but we do need to do a little work to get the ID of things to pass to Airflow to say, hey, run this workflow, uh, run this connector. Um, and coming soon, we'll have a way to do that within the CLI. So demo time. Um, again, here's the link, github.com, Airbyte HQ, Airflow Summit, Airbyte 2022. And we're gonna show you a demo of a totally open source data stack. Uh, so obviously Airflow is in charge, Airflow is the orchestrator. And what we're gonna do is grab data from a source. In this case, it's a fake source that generates data that looks kind of like an e-commerce database. Um, it's got a user's table. Those users have names and email addresses and that kind of stuff. We're going to extract it. We're going to load it into a data warehouse, in this case, Postgres. And then we're going to use DPT to mess with that data and transform it and make it more useful for us uh, with Airflow being in charge of the whole situation. So there are two parts to our demo. Part one is the easy part where everything works great. So I'm going to stop my slides here and jump over to my code. I think that's coming through still pretty fine. Great. So uh, the first thing to share about the demo is there are two um, setup files you'll need, a home Octavia for the Octavia CLI and a home dbt profile for dbt. Uh, for our demo, we're doing everything locally with Docker Compose. Um, but once you set those files up, you can run our single start script, which is a bash script, that'll spin everything up uh, and get it running. We're doing everything within Docker, within Docker Compose, to make this really transportable as well. It should run in any environment, run in every server, and most importantly, you can also run in CI without installing any dependencies other than Docker, uh, which is really helpful. So I have the script running in the background, and you can see that it spun up Airflow, and everything Airflow needs is running. It spun up Airbyte, and everything Airbyte needs is running. And we have a destination, uh, our Postgres data, data warehouse. So that's all up and running. And what that means is in my UI, I can go to the Airflow UI and see my DAG here. And I can go to the Airbyte UI and see my connection here. And everything is working out, working out great. And the best place to start this entry point is by looking through the UI. So what does our DAG include? Our DAG includes a couple of steps. We'll go to the graph here. We learn about our Airbyte connection ID. We run the Airbyte sync. We learn about dbt. And then we run the dbt run. It's a four-step, very simple, very linear um, DAG. But 
it shows off kind of the power of connecting all these things uh, together. On the Airbyte side, this is what an Airbyte connection looks like. We have our source, our fake user source, our destination, Postgres. And what's cool about the Postgres source is that you can see that all of our information was loaded from our environment file. So the host, the password, the port, all this stuff. And it's as simple as changing your environment variables to change this information when you load it into Airbyte with the FKB CLI. Um, so when this is deployed to production, obviously th these values will be different, but it'll work just the same. So the Air Airbyte DAG kicks off, it runs the connection, and you can see we have a successful sync. We uh, got a thousand rows from our source and wrote a thousand rows to our destination. It took 42 seconds. Uh, every time the uh, Airflow DAG kicks off, it'll run this again and load more data into our into our uh, data warehouse. Going back to the code, what that looks like is Airbyte, sources, destinations, connections. We have these YAML config files for everything we need. So the Postgres destination looks like this, talks about the Postgres destination, the version, and how it loads our environment variables and as needed. So there's a nice and human readable Checked in to get, but no secrets will be there. It's very pleasant. On the Airbyte side, or the Airflow side, sorry, we have our DAGs. And as Marcus mentioned earlier, we're using the uh, Airbyte trigger sync operator, which connects really nicely. And we do have a little bit of custom code here to pull um, our Airbyte server to learn if the uh, connection is done or not. So Airbyte, or Airflow can check on Airbyte check the status of things, and when it's done, move on to the next step. Uh, hopefully, this group is familiar with Airflow, but we're writing this in Python, and uh, that's how it works. Jumping over to our data, when Airbyte brings data into a destination, we store data as raw JSON. Uh, and don't worry, this is all fake data. It's not. It looks like it's real, but it's all fake. Um, we store data as raw JSON, it's a big JSON blob like this, uh, just with the timestamp that we got it and whatever we got from the source. So this might have come from an API, this might have come from another database. It's all stored kind of raw here. And what, what we're gonna use dbt for is to translate this uh, from Airbyte raw users to what we call data stream. And this makes a lot more sense. This is you know, it's the first name column, the last name column, the email column, pretty standard dbt transformation. And the way we do that, is close this up into the dbt folder into our models so we have a couple steps where we use the json extract functionality of airbyte and our database we pull out the fields we care about split up the string of name into first name and last name and that kind of stuff pretty standard things um, but this is how our dbt process runs as well and again it's all orchestrated and controlled by airflow What's cool is all of this is checked in under the Airflow folder here, and we're actually building a single Docker file that contains both Airflow and dbt, and that's how it runs. And you can check out the sample code a little bit later. Going back to the presentation. Oops, so again, here we go. Just a little quick summary of our demo so far. We have this nicely organized project, Everything is in Docker and Docker Compose, so it's really easy to deploy, and it's really easy to run on our CI server. You just have a bash script to start it. We're using Airflow to orchestrate things. Uh, we talked about our Python uh, DAGs. We're using uh, Airbytes to extract and load. We talked about our config YAML files. And of note in Airbyte, uh, Airbyte also by itself can do normalization. Uh, we can run dbt for you. And we can take all the fields we get and flatten them out into your database. Uh, we're choosing not to do that in this example. So we, uh, the bottom left picture there, we decided to keep our normalization raw uh, and not use uh, Airbyte's internal dbt. And we also are using uh, a manual schedule in the language of Airbyte uh, because we want Airflow to control it uh, rather than have Airbyte run every hour or day or, or what we can do with our own scheduling. We get raw data like this. Don't worry, it's all fake. And we're using dbt to transform it uh, to a table like this. So that's the first part of the demo. It all works great. Uh, it's running on CI and our GitHub project. 
uh, and everything is going well. Um, as I mentioned, there's some future work we're going to do around uh, getting those resource IDs. Uh, baking the custom Docker, Docker image is something you might want to work on. And perhaps in CI, you might want to use a posted, hosted database rather than one inside of Docker so you can look at the data and inspect it. That's one thing you might want to do in the future. This is all open source, pull request welcome, um, and let us know your ideas in GitHub. So the second part of the demo, this is where it gets really powerful. Um, I have made a pull request, here it is, changing one of our dbt transformations, where I want to change uh, what is, used to be a last name into family name to be a little more internationally appropriate. And I push up my pull request, and it fails. And a failing pull request is amazing, because it showed that, one, whatever I did broke it. Two, I, I probably shouldn't merge this if it's red, and I can use GitHub to prevent this from being merged. And this is a great place for us to have a conversation about what's going wrong and how we might change it. Uh, we do this at Airbyte all the time in our open source project. And really, this shows off, which, which is the real power of this. If you go to the details here, the logs are kind of uh, verbose. But you can see really clearly that the problem was with dbt. And there's an error with dbt. Uh, and it's because, uh, where'd it go? The column last name doesn't exist. Oh, something is still relying on last name. I changed the first name was something I either have an incomplete change or it's a change I shouldn't make. And this right here is the real power of what we're showing off here. Now that everything is checked into Git and you can run this on CI, you can feel really confident that this won't get deployed uh, by accident. This won't get deployed in a way that breaks your production service. And this won't get deployed in a way where your users are uh, sad. And this safety right here is the real power of this workflow and the real power of all the tools in the modern data stack. Back to the presentation here. So failing PRs are great. This is awesome because it keeps everybody safe. This keeps every all of our, our customers happy and our product uh, from breaking. So frankly, I can sleep better and not be woken up in the middle of the night when I'm on call. This is the best part. Um, so what's next? Where do you go from here? Of course, I'm going to fix my pull request. Uh, but then what do I do? The next things you might investigate if this was your project uh, for real at work was you might investigate automatic deployments. You know now any code that gets onto the main branch is already tested, is safe. Maybe I should deploy this to a staging server automatically uh, or a production server if you're feeling uh, bullish and confident. You might also want to investigate doing some health checks on your production data uh, because you're going to be changing it rapidly. So you should do some checks um, against the data and make sure that you expect the data you expect is there. And most interesting for this context of this toss is you can write some better tests. So what we've written so far with our script that runs the whole thing is an integration end-to-end -end test. It's really kind of a blunt instrument. It runs Airflow, it runs Airbyte, it runs dbt, and it either succeeds or fails. That's really important, but there might be kind of problems hidden inside of that. Maybe the data I got is missing or bad in some way. Just because the whole thing succeeded doesn't mean that the data is correct. So um, just like the rest of software engineering, you could do unit tests, you could do acceptance tests. Uh, a good example of a unit test would be, is this specific row what I expect? Is the first name for user three, who is Evan, really Evan? Or you could do acceptance tests. There's awesome tools like Great Expectations that really can check on collections of data, like do all the email addresses have an at sign or all the things, the lifetime values of customers, positive integers, positive numbers, that kind of stuff. And there's even linting now uh, in, the, in our world. Uh, SQL Fluff is pretty cool. It lints SQL files. Um, and there's other linters out there for DBT and things like that as well. Um, what's cool about this demo project is that you can see that there's one entry point, our GitHub action, uh, that runs just one test. I'll pull that up here in our repo. And so this GitHub action is our CI suite. And it runs our bash script. Uh, and you can add to this. You could run a uh, great expectations command here. You can run a SQL fluff command here. This is your entry point. It'll still add on to your suite and prevent uh, bad deploys from going out. And so hopefully, present, here we go. Uh, this has inspired you to uh, start automating your tests, start automating your deployments, 
and really feel confident uh, using the modern tools that are out there uh, that you can have a safe deployment, a reliable deployment and sleep better at night. Thank you.